Uh, good morning, guys. I'm Dhananjay Sathe. I'm a senior operations engineer at Directai, uh, where I work on the platform team. And uh, our flagship project is building our meta monitoring system, right? And uh, let's first start up with what I call the consensus slide. And we all can come to agree on the fact that monitoring today in its current form sucks. It's perfectly broken, right? And uh, it's, it's a multifaceted monster. Every time you chop one head off, you end up with something like that. A new beast shows up, and it's an unending thing. And where you started off like John of Arc, you end up like that guy. You've just given up. And the problem with this is what we believe the problem with this, per se, is how we interpret monitoring and time and dimensions and why that really matters. So going back to the basis of any monitoring system, it boils down to something like this, right? Every monitoring system has a similar construct of alerting. You have a data structure that comprises of something that gives you just enough information about what's wrong. It tells you a server, a service possibly, which could be a host service, and a state, indicating its state in certain ways, right? And of all those things, you have time, where time is just a point object. It is a time stamp that uniquely identifies when this occurred. And what that, what that has done today is your mailbox is flooded with multiple monitoring alerts uh, from different sources. It's often that you use Nagios, Zabbix, Pengdom, a combination of uh, monitoring tools to manage your monitoring systems, right? And this is an ideal Nagios, what a Nagios alert looks like. It tells you about some problem. And there are efforts going on to try and improve these interfaces. And you end up with something like Thruk, which is fairly widely used across the industry, where you are essentially playing Dance Dance Revolution, and you have green and red lights. And every time you see a red light, you're trying to kill the red light. It's a lot like Harry and Ron in the burrow trying to weed out gnomes. And every time they spot a gnome, they throw it out. And we believe there are a few fundamental problems with the way this works. If you see what an event is at the end of a day, right? it, can, it lacks context. It just talks about itself at a particular time instant. It also cannot describe a situation. A situation to a human mind is the way we process an event. And it cannot hold state. It just tells you about its current state. It does not tell you about the history of state or how state change has occurred. And it does two or three really good things. If you were to take each attribute in this data structure and model it into n-dimensional space, what you essentially could do from this point was partition that space according to your needs. And this is really cool because you can do classification and clustering. Now, a, a very familiar construct in most monitoring systems is when you configure a check, you configure a particular escalation path for it, you configure other stuff about it. And uh, this is not the way you think. Think of it in the way you would invest in a stock market, or think of it as you would look for airline price tickets. You would give a context, you would give a field of interest, a query that completely defines what you really are interested in. You're stating an intent. And the, the way you think about an intent could be across, you could, so what we use in the backend is Lucene. And if you treat each attribute, you could treat each attribute as a Lucene query that partitions space and gets you something that intersects all points. It could be as random as give me, I am interested in all events, anything happening on these bunch of servers, if they have a certain uh, field in their info tag. You could come up with any arbitrary Lucene query or any arbitrary uh, bunch of regexes to do this. So this is uh, done on the fly, right? You don't configure your checks. And what this does to you is we configure dummy checks that go into every manifest file, and they just fire events into our system, right? And why this matters a lot is have a look at this example. This is a situation when you go to the beach, beach with the bums, right? And the human definition of an event of going to the beach is discrete, it's fuzzily discrete, yet it's continuous. And it contains state about itself. It, you have questions of, like, what did Tim say? Where did we go? What did we do? What did we eat? 
it encapsulates the conversations around it. It encapsulates the probability of someone showing up. When you make a plan to go to a certain space, you probably ask yourself questions before calling up your friends and figuring out which one of them will probably show up and which one of them will probably not show up. And humans tend to think of events and time in these situational contexts. And our brains are hardwired to solve problems about situations. You think of situations. There's a direct mapping between time as an entity and situations. And that, those are the kind of questions you really should be asking yourself. So it's a collection of all experiences and everything around that state, right? And what if we could do this to monitoring, right? What if when I looked at a bunch of events, I didn't look at them, look at a bunch of discrete events, but I looked at it as if I'm looking at a situation, right? So this is where we came up with the incident center of the universe. And what, I, uh, what we do is the incident is interacting with the entire system and the entire system is aware of the incident. And this is a really unique thing because when you refer to that holiday or you refer to this conference a year later, you are uniquely identifying a period in time that talks about this conference. And if you actually look at what we are doing in evented systems today, it's pretty funny, right? You go and put a bunch of parameters, server service, then you take a date and time range and then you look at a bunch of graphs. And there's no really unique way to identify it. You end up giving a parameter list to any other user who's trying to figure out what's happening. Right? So what you do is follow this new incident center of the universe, mask away your events as timelines and state changes which make a lot of sense to the human mind. Uh, capture conversation around it. If you look at what Facebook essentially is, is an event-driven approach. When something happens in the world around you, people come together, post comments, likes. All these are events. But what you get out of it is a story. You get a timeline. You get this context of occurrence of things in the world. Right? And, and we think about it really so naturally that even your grandmom can use Facebook today. You don't need to think in evented streams. And once you start doing that and get feedback and analysis, every possible query, every possible click a user makes onto the system, every possible visit into this idea of the incident can now be used to do really interesting things, mathematical functions, virality scores, and a bunch of other things. Even an alert, the number of alerts that go out could add to its virality, right? So what, how do we do this? Take the center as a finite state machine and describe every other entity as a transformation function onto this. And now what you have is you've gone up from eight dimensions of an event to about 28 dimensions, both mathematical and discrete. And you can query them, again, the reason I love Lucene. And what you have here now is continuous time that is fuzzily discrete. So you look for patterns of events that occur. And once you reach stability, the same way you would look or describe a period of illness, right? When you have a, a, a fever, you would say, I had a fever three days back, and now I'm OK. There's no beginning or end, but it's slightly fuzzy. And uh, the advantages of this is, as I said, it's aware, it's aware of all the changes happening across my infrastructure. It's aware of all events. I am now completely free of uh, selecting a good monitoring system. We've actually put in uh, systems where you could run a REST API request. And we've put in stuff like KFC showed up when we were testing it. And that would still follow the same construct, right? And the system's aware of this entity, and it's contextually aware. So do, uh, diving in further, right, capture all these streams. Now, if you're trying to uh, process events at scale, your events can be dumped into databases as immutable facts. And these are really easy to process and query for a system and evented systems work really well. But create materialized views that are good for the human context of it all. And alert based on this. Do not alert based on events, but alert based on timelines of these incidents. You can define cooldown periods. If I had something in the morning uh, at 7, p 7 AM, and it came back up at 7.15, went back down at 7.18, went back up again, I'll still continue my old escalation chain, because that's still the same logical construct. But if that occurred in the evening, I'd probably still have the same context, but it would be a new escalation path. 
because it's probably a new issue, but it's related to the same old issue, right? So you, how do you do this? Uh, so these are some of the outputs of it. The fact that you can refer and search this space, you can actually refer back to any incident that ever happened in your infrastructure and look back at it. More interestingly, this is how we look at an incident today. Uh, you have links into your old monitoring systems. You have all your stuff coming in from Nagios or Pingdom, any other reference links into your uh, intelligence uh, or your Wikipedias in your company. And there's this bunch of things. Something really interesting here is this particular fact about an aggregation. So the fact that I've come to this conference is an event for me, and the fact that you've come for this conference is also an event for you, right? But what we tend to do is we tend to look at it as a single event. It's coming to a conference, and you've clustered up all these ideas, all these discrete things into one big idea of a conference, or even the party at the beach. And uh, this is what our autom automatic system does. And as people figure patterns, they can, automatic, uh, they can add better rules to improve this filtering and improve these criteria, right? And uh, people have conversation about it, right? And people act and comment, the standard construct of any monitoring system. But there's something interesting that happens out here. For every piece of data that we get as an input into this entity that we have now, we can define from qualitative data, we've come up to a quantitative score which computes the number of events, the number of recurrences, its severity levels, uh, people talking about it, how many people, how far up the chain were notified. And using this, you can probably choose the right route when you start clustering incidents together. And in a very good, I'd say 80 to 90% of the cases, this algorithm actually figures out what's the root cause, puts everything together, follows the chain for the root cause without involving people for each chain. So you reduce a lot of noise by doing that, and that is an advantage of this uh, idea of perceiving time. And the best part is you still, have, you still have all your raw data. If you actually wanted to go and debug uh, on the raw tab, you would actually find your event data and you could look at it. But to expect a human being to look at a bunch of event data just doesn't make any more sense, right? Because you're now aware of a situation. What are the other advantages of this? Uh, these are a bunch of things we do. When I look at a particular incident on a particular server, now, in monitoring, it, you can assume that other than time, the two other most important dimensions are the host name and the particular check that you're talking about, or a host group name and the cluster check that you're talking about, right? And what you would do is you would find incidents with similarity signatures in the same service impacted in your host group. And the host groups, again, were not defined at the check time. They were defined by those intent queries. So I could change them on the fly without having to change my check at all, right? And this tells me if I'm viewing this incident here and I'm trying to debug this, often the service is impacted across a bunch of hosts, right? So if I want to debug this service, I would actually probably just want to click on this one because it looks like a more uh, important service. And it's in the same signature group. And that could probably be something that I look at. And I could realign all my clusters around that field. And then I would look to solve that issue, right? Um, another interesting thing that happens is when you, you have freedom to control how you do these merges as well. And uh, on the same hosts, uh, if you have a RabbitMQ alert, you'll actually find a bunch of RabbitMQ-related checks going down. And this wheel that you have here is also generated from the same scoring algorithm that was used to merge them. Right? So you can assess uh, qualitatively. Oh, yeah. Sorry for that. Excuse me. Right. And uh, the advantages are, in other ways, uh, you have statistics. And if, if this thing actually did have a factor where a product team was affected and you had support tickets coming into it, uh, I think the impact of an event or an incident in infrastructure is just as me measuring time and measuring uh, how many servers were affected or how many 
uh, sectors were corrupted would probably be more interesting to see how many users were affected, uh, what sort of other impacts did you have over there. And you still retain your ability to uh, drill down into a particular issue and look at it, uh, merge and unmerge these trees. Uh, the other thing is integration of changes. So if you follow a certain, uh, if you have really large infrastructure and you're trying to make changes in them, then you could assess uh, using these, using a sum of all these scores, you could now assess how successful your change was. Uh, what was the description? What was the probable start period? Uh, how efficiently is your team actually doing your changes? And that would also show up in this incident, in the same page, right? And if, so, uh, if you had a fault in your infrastructure and you did something like an RCA on it, right? Every time there is an uh, issue with similar signatures in a f particular reference frame, uh, all the RCAs would show up. So what this ends up doing is tomorrow when I, have an, uh, when I wake up in the middle of the night or I'm in the middle of a party and I get an alert and I open this, I immediately get complete context of the system as the situation. I don't have to look through discrete sources and discrete streams to try and make sense of this uh, situation. The situation is presented to me and I need to just act on it. And this is a very powerful thing for us. I mean, you actually stop looking at Nagios in certain teams because of this, right? Uh, what else can you do with it? Now, this is, uh, I talked about going from eight to 28 dimensions, adding mathematical functions to it. So I can actually drop this uh, issue map uh, using an arbitrary Lucene query again. So it could be anything from a server group to a host group to uh, incidents that had certain people involved in it to just a simple server and a service group, right? It's, it's a Lucene query again. And I would get impacts of, uh, and the colors of these circles would tell me uh, what is currently happening in a certain uh, data center that I'm running. And what are the hottest issues that I need to look at? And uh, what are the most recurring issues that tend to you know, take up people's time and are repetitive, so you probably want to get rid of them if you could. And uh, priority ignored issues. At times, you have issues, uh, S3 and S4 issues, that you want to fix, but you don't really fix because it's not uh, harming your production traffic in any way. So those will go down, and then you could just look up this dashboard and you have time and you can clean it up, right? And you could do statistic, uh, statistical, uh, uh, right. This is one more important thing that happens out of tracking all this data, is as a user, when I go to the dashboard, I can track stuff like what were the issues that interrupted my sleep how many times was I interrupted in the last week versus this week? And what were the things that actually caused me to lose sleep? And uh, this is probably one issue that troubles every person on call uh, than any other issue that you would have uh, in your job. So I think it's really important to get this out of the way. The next is statistics. Uh, I define certain criteria, not particularly business SLA criteria, but criteria about how my team should actually perform and uh, what kind of severity issues should be solved in what periods of time. And what I can do with this is I can detect how many times we breached that in a particular, uh, how many occurrences of a breach happened in a week, right? And similarly, we could do that for weekly downtimes and MTTR statistics and a, and a host of other things. This, and that's the interesting bit. When you click on any of these graph lines, uh, you'll actually get a breach offender list or a downtime offender list, and you have the issues that you that have caused this. They might be open, still open. In most cases, they're usually closed. They've been solved. But what that helps you do is it tells you uh, what you should probably be looking at in your infrastructure, and that's a super important thing because those little little penalties add up and uh, kind of mess with your quality of service, mess with what you're trying to do. So these things are really important, and a host of other statistics. So yeah, that is how we see monitoring. And I would want to keep some time out for these questions, because I think this is a fairly new approach to it. So go for it. So it wasn't clear to me, are you offering this as a project, a service, a product, uh, open source? Business model? Uh, I, it's still an internal tool. 
So and it was just about the, this idea is how we built our tool around. So it was about that. Understood. Okay, cool. Thank you. So uh, great talk. Uh, just wanted to know that when you say that uh, you know you link your uh, monitoring with the issues that were reported earlier, right? So what's, yeah. uh, what's the issue tracking tool that you use? You have Jira or something in the back end with which you link this up? Or? Uh, no, we've just written the whole platform. Okay, cool. So it's everything happening in the platform. Oh yeah, the issue tracking for uh, our customer services, I think use RT or Jira. It, okay. They do API calls, so I'm not really sure what they use. Okay, it's cool. a platform, they can, you can pump anything into it. Cool. And I understand this is an internal tool, but you know, uh, would be really helpful to get an, and I came to the uh, talk just to get the idea of how you are, you know, looking at monitoring, as you said, it's a new approach. Would it be really helpful if you have a, a demo with dummy data set up somewhere so that, you know, you, you know, people can check it out. Plus, you know, it stays internal. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be really helpful. yeah, that might be interesting. Hey man, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So you have gathered a lot of data regarding services and all those things right now. I mean, you are able to uh, visualize the entire situation of uh, surrounding that event, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, have you, are you planning to put any auto remediation or auto healing kind of stuff in place? Uh, potentially we could, right? So wh what's happened is we're sending out alerts and pager messages at endpoints. Now, what I would do is since it's a pluggable system, I could plug in uh, an API uh, and at the end of the day, sending an SMS is basically calling an API endpoint. And I could add another API endpoint, but uh, we as a team do not really handle the, uh, I mean, there, in, in a company where you have so many businesses and so many teams doing so many things, there's no good way for us to figure out a system to auto heal uh, stuff that you've blown up because we probably don't know what you're running out there. But we could provide you an API endpoint service that you could subscribe to and then hook into this system in a way. So that is something that could be done. Yeah, hi. Uh, I think we could do a little with uh, the internals of the service because right now it's like you've essentially arrived at this utopian point wherein you get context-based alerts. And we, like I personally have nothing that I can, you know, absorb from this which mm -hmm. can like, take my uh, alerting system from point A to point B. So can you talk a little more about the internals? Uh, okay, uh, let's see what I could talk about that. So yeah, uh, we, we really love the Unix philosophy. We're not a monitoring system. Uh, that, that's, what I talk, that's what I opened my talk with. Uh, we are a meta-monitoring system. And uh, I think Bert would agree with me that it's, I mean, he would testify to the fact that building a monitoring system is an extremely complex task. And there are a bunch of really good monitoring systems out there already and people could write uh, a simple request into their code that would potentially be a source of monitoring. And we take this data and then we process it uh, in these constructs. So I, I expect you to give me an event that has uh, a minimal of a state, a server, a host name, uh, and, uh, and a timestamp, right? I need these three things to kind of build onto it, enrich my data, send it to the pipeline, construct these views. And uh, the other interesting thing is because of the way we've implemented it, we still have the immutable fact. So we could run our engine from the beginning of time with a completely new algorithm, a completely new bunch of things. And uh, I would end up with an, a new state. Uh, it's just a materialized view. I could end up with a new state that I could then query or do whatever with, right? Uh, backends uh, would be Elasticsearch, a lot of scripting into Elasticsearch. Uh, a pipeline is a completely async pipeline, standard broker queues, processors. Do you also do these things as in, uh, for lower level scale, you don't alert for the higher level? Like, if the network on the system goes down, you should not ideally alert the app developer because it's a network where they should have Potentially, potentially that would happen, right? That would happen in, in the case where uh, the network would be a, the thing that failed first and a lot of people would be uh, alerted and looking into it and uh, your aggregations would collapse into that network layer. But you do get it wrong at times. I mean, yeah, we, there is room for improvement over there, but yeah, you could define our, so the other uh, interesting thing we do with aggregations is uh, in, in most of the systems, you define an aggregation uh, in a very specific term. Uh, you define an aggregation such that uh, if 
this server, if these bunch of checks happen together, then uh, you know, aggregate it. So since we've taken this approach of arbitrary queries, uh, we could actually write an aggregation that says if there is uh, an S2 alert in this group and the number of those alerts is three in the last half an hour and I have two more alerts from this other group in one hour and this query sequence overlaps, then combine them all together. And you don't think of the aggregation in terms of the check, you think of the aggregation in terms of the situation, right? If you are talking about just the monitoring part of it, if you are using Isinga, Isinga 2, you have service dependencies that you can create. So if my uh, database goes down, I really don't need to be alerted for my app checks, right? Because my database is down. So you, you say that this service depends on that, and Isinga 2 and all these guys do that. So you can already ha have this in place, if at all you are using those monitoring solutions. Uh, as I said, you could uh, fire the groove, the rattlesnake example into it, and it would still work. It's arbitrary strings, right? It's uh, it it could be a curl request. There are actually people who are using curl cron jobs with curl requests as a monitoring source, so that also works. Yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Thank, Thank you, guys. You.